Hey there, Pan friends. Welcome to the channel again. Like always, it's me, your host, Amy from Panventure, and welcome to, I believe, one of the most controversial videos for 2021 on our YouTube channel. My top 10 fountain pens of 2021. We are approaching the final days of 2021. I am very happy to be in good health, good spirit, and uh, 2021 was a blast. So many pens, so many new lessons learned, so many new friends, and I am very, very blessed to stand in front of you here today and to showcase my top 10 favorite fountain pens of 2021. It is sort of a tradition right now uh, to have these videos and uh, you will see that I've made some major changes in my top 10 favorite fountain pens list because why not? I've tried for this video to set up some new rules this year and I will tell you the logic behind them. First of all, I couldn't pick more than one exclusive fountain pen from uh, my exclusive uh, fountain pens that I've done over the years. That limits the range a lot, but I'm gonna stay true and I will show you what fountain pen I do love the most and I do uh, feel very excited to use it every single time and to have it in my collection and to have the possibility of making that pen. The second rule is that I didn't want it to have more than one pen from a brand. This is a new rule that I've introduced because I wanted to complicate this list as much as possible and to really dig deep and to find what uh, makes me uh, put a pen on that top 10 list. And um, I don't know, let's see if I did a good job. If I remember correctly from the last year, the top one pen was the Visconti Watermark. And that pen is very, very close to my heart. Let's see this year where it's going to be located. I'm gonna start with the number 10 and we are going to work our way up on the list. And uh, I will say a few words regarding each pen whenever there is a video review for that specific pen. You will find the video linked up here. And of course, I know that this kind of videos stir a little bit of controversy between you, the viewers, and try to understand that this is my top 10 favorite fountain pens from uh, a personal collection that's uh, closely numbering 90 plus or minus fountain pens at this moment. And I did my best to pick what I think are the ones that uh, really, really make me smile whenever I see them, whenever I hold them, and uh, make me feel proud that I am a custodian for them. So let's kick it up in first gear with number 10 on our list. And that one is my Stipula Etruria Classica in Alter Ego Celluloid. A very unique fountain pen which I had so, so much time to uh, think about it and to actually find it available in a pen store and to actually go for it. This was my first uh, celluloid fountain pen from Stipula. I acquired it from uh, Novelli in Italy and uh, this is a very, very unique and beautiful celluloid which has a nice story behind it and you can find the story in the video with the visit on Stipula. Luca tells a lot more facts regarding this celluloid in that video, and you can find that on our YouTube channel. This fountain pen is equipped with a fine Stiflex 14 karat gold nib, in-house made, sterling silver trims, and it is a beautiful, beautiful fountain pen and uh, this had to uh, be on the list because this is one of the most interesting fountain pens from Stipula that I own at this moment. I am looking for its uh, sibling 
which I think it's the Stipulite Rurea Classica in Amber Celluloid. And at one point, probably I will add that one too. So number 10 on the list is my Stipulite Rurea Classica in Alter Ego Celluloid. Let's see which fountain pen resides at number nine. At number nine, we have my Monte Grappa 1930 Extra in Rosso Celluloid. This is a fountain pen that I have not planned to own. I was uh, in Rome, in Stefano, at the Stilografica Corsani shop uh, on Via Taviano, and he was showing me a lot of fountain pens, and the second he opened the box on this 1930 Extra, I said, I'm gonna take that home with me right now. I was going through a phase with red fountain pens. Not that I'm cured at this moment. I still pick uh, most of my fountain pens in red color, but it is a beautiful fountain pen, a very, very nice work from Monte Grappa. It has a 18 karat gold nib. It is a very elegant, beautiful, striking um, red color, and I do adore it and I do carry it with me very, very often. And we arrive at number eight on our list. Scribo Phil Zucca. Nothing more, nothing less. A very, very interesting fountain pen. It got me from the first second that I've seen them when I got them in stock and I said, I want to have it in my private collection. Faceted, beautiful orange, uh, chateauant color, two sides, a darker part of the material and a lighter part. It is splendid. On this fountain pen, I have a broad nib, which is the flexible one, the 14 karat gold flexible one, and I simply adore it. It's been used, it's been cared for, and uh, it is very, very hard to say no to this fountain pen whenever I'm browsing in my collection to actually look for a fountain pen that I want to put ink in it. Beautiful writer. And uh, I do have another Scribo coming on the way, which is uh, going to be showcased on our channel, but more on that in the actual video. And we are at number seven. At number seven, it's a fountain pen that uh, have not been seen too much on uh, my Instagram or featured too much because it's from a company that's no longer with us. But it is a company which I simply love to have in my collection and I do think that they were ahead of time whenever they did fountain pens. Can you guess which company? Let's see. It is the one and only Delta Roma Imperiale. It is a fountain pen that has a nice story attached to it, but the actual thing that made me want to have it is that I've loved from the first second the actual shape of the fountain pen, this beautiful, gorgeous green ebonite and this cigar torpedo shaped fountain pen with a huge, huge size eight gold nib. This is a medium and I love every single feature of this fountain pen. I know that they are available two more colors, the red, the brick one, uh, and the blue one. I would love to have the blue one, but again, I have so many blue pens in my collection and I really love it. I got this fountain pen from uh, a dear friend of mine and I am very, very fortunate to have such friends that uh, help me out. Probably we will have a video review coming for this Delta Roma Imperiale, this humongous, oversized, beautiful fountain pen, and I can't wait to showcase this review with you all. And don't get me wrong, it's very, very hard for me to pick, uh, using those rules that I've told you at the beginning of the video, a fountain pen from uh, every single manufacturer that I own in my uh, private fountain pen collection, and uh, at number six, we have a very nice fountain pen, which I think it was um, supposed to be higher on the list. But anyway, considering all of the rules and all of that, it made it to number six. And that fountain pen is Minakaya 
dorsal fin V1. I cannot explain why, but lately I am considering adding more and more Urushi fountain pens to my fountain pen collection. And I had to pick one. Whenever I uh, browse my hand throughout my collection and want to have a fountain pen inked, usually it's this Nakaya Dorsal Fin V1. And the story behind it is very nice because I acquired it from Shakura Fountain Pen Gallery and it's supposed to be a uh, Dorsal Fin V2, but instead it turned out to be a V1. But I love it anyway. It's nice, it's interesting, and the Urushi is absolutely spectacular. On this fountain pen we have a 14 karat fine nib which is a sweet sweet uh, nice feedbacky fine Japanese and I do love this fountain pen and it's a shame because it's supposed to be higher on the list but considering all facts and all other fountain pens I had to put it on the list at one point so I made a compromise and put it at number six. Now let's continue with number five. At number five we have the biggest fountain pen in my collection. And it is my Oldwin Custom Oversize uh, Urushi Creation. I don't know, uh, it's a masterpiece. It's a one of one ever in existence and uh, it is one of the fountain pens that was added this year to the collection. And after restoring a little bit of the finish of this fountain pen, I wanted to keep it in my private collection because I love it. The size is uh, very impressive in person and this fountain pen is flawless in my opinion. It has uh, been covered in rotten all over. It's cracked on the surface. It's basically um, a legend. Uh, to actually work on this fountain pen, the creator, which is District Urushi, had to work on this fountain pen for 8 to 10 months on a single fountain pen. That says a lot about this fountain pen and uh, I love it ever since I got it. On this fountain pen we have a massive size 8, 18 karat Oldwin Paris gold nib with a ebonite feed and uh, this fountain pen was showcased in a very nice in-depth review. You will find the video uh, linked up here along with the other reviews. Whenever we have reviews on our channel, I will try to link them up there. And we get to top four fountain pens. So we have only four remaining and we get into the ones that are quite serious. And uh, at number four, we have a fountain pen that finally after so many years, um, it came down from uh, the top of the list. <laughs> it is my one and only Visconti watermark. And boy, my heart is split in half because uh, I do love this fountain pen a lot. This is my first fountain pen over 1000 euros. It was acquired from uh, my good friend Stefano at Stilografica Corsani, made in uh, solid silver and it is unbelievable nice, this fountain pen. The nib that I have on it, it's the 22 karat palladium 1.3 millimeter stub, which was adjusted to run flawless by the guys over at the repair department in Visconti, Lorenzo and uh, Luca, which I am so, so grateful to call friends because they took care of this fountain pen every single time. And I love this nib, I love this fountain pen. And I had to uh, downgrade it from the top of the list to number four because other fountain pens came with a more impressive story, with uh, more um, power over me to say so. And I had to put this fountain pen at number four on the list. Anyway, I think number four out of 90 fountain pens is still impressive. But now I think I got you curious to see what are the top three fountain pens. And uh, probably most of you guys that know me suspect which might be uh, in this uh, top three. Let me put this one right here and let me go with number three. I know 
I know it was a rule. Uh, no two fountain pens from the same company. And we have a ASC collaboration with Visconti, a Manhattan model in Arco celluloid. And uh, basically here is where I want to bend the rules a little bit because this is made by Armando Simone Club in collaboration with Visconti. And on this fountain pen we find two of my favorite things about Italy. Well, there are many, like pizza, spaghetti, friendships, everything. But in regards to fountain pens, we have Arco Celluloid and Visconti. And considering that there isn't any other fountain pen that meets those two criteria, I truly believe this is a very, very impressive fountain pen for me, which I call myself an Italian fountain pen collector. And it brings me a lot of joy to have this fountain pen in my collection. I don't have a video review for it, but I promise I will make one because it deserves. It's so rare and the story behind it is very impressive. On this fountain pen we have an 18 karat gold medium nib, rose gold plated, ebonite feed. And this is the fountain pen that it can tell a story. You will remain uh, very, very impressed about the story of this fountain pen. But I'm going to leave that for the video review, which uh, is soon to be on our YouTube channel. Now we only have two of them left, and this is very hard for me. And uh, let's see. At number two, we have the exclusive. This is my Leonardo Officina Italiana Momento Zero Grande Thunder. And this is the name that I've gave to this creation. This is the only exclusive fountain pen that made the cut in this top 10 list. And let me tell you why. First of all, I have a very good friendship with Leonardo Officina Italiana, with the guys over there, um, Salva, uh, Ciro, Maria Francesca, and they don't grant this uh, kind of privilege too often to uh, other people. So they gave me a unique celluloid, which is this beautiful purple celluloid. At that moment, when this fountain pen was released in only 10 pens, numbering only 10 for uh, Pen Venture exclusively, I knew that uh, it wasn't used in the fountain pen industry uh, till that point. I was a little bit wrong because uh, I've uh, spotted a Kron fountain pen in the same material, but besides that, I haven't seen this celluloid anywhere. I love it because it is so, so beautiful and only, only 10 pieces of it made. It's a Momento Zero Grande with a huge size 8 gold nib, 14 karat on mine. I have an extra fine and it is equipped with rose gold plated trims. And this fountain pen, it's one of the most uh, beautiful fountain pens that I'm so proud to have put together. Um, I'm gonna roll it a little bit just to show you guys that it's almost like a purple Arco celluloid. And I love it so, so much. Comment down below if you want to see something in uh, the same color of celluloid. And uh, maybe Leonardo Vicina Italiana thinks uh, that uh, it's best to give me another chance and to have another go with this purple celluloid in a different pen because I have a very nice idea for an exclusive collection with Leonardo based on this purple celluloid. Now, we are at number one on our list and uh, it's been a hard pick because um, I had to think outside the box and go for the story, go for the founder band that uh, got me very excited, got me very curious, made me uh, go and look for it, make an effort, ask so many people and I picked for number one, uh, I want to show you, I'm not going to tell you. My classic pants LB5, 
in this beautiful diffusion bonded acrylic purple Tyreek Q. It has the monster cross point nib. This is one of the most elusive fountain pens that I've ever hunted because it took me almost three years to actually stumble upon one at a price that I had to afford. I still think this is a benchmark in every single collection that's out there. And uh, if you are a luxury fountain pen collector, I truly believe this fountain pen has to have its place in your collection. Of course, I had to complicate things and go for the cross point nib, which is one of the most rarest and elusive nibs. And uh, this fountain pen uh, was uh, almost like it was destined to be mine. Usually I collect fountain pens with number three or number 33 or number 13. This number fountain pen is number 13 out of 50 fountain pens. It is based on the king of pen. It's slightly bigger and I love it. I think this fountain pen was destined to be mine at one point because I love the color purple and I love number 13 and also I love the cross point nib because that's not made anymore. Uh, it's a Nagahara nib and uh, to the best of my understanding and uh, knowledge regarding Nagahara, the nibmeister that produces that nib, nibs, uh, the stacked nibs uh, from uh, Sailor, it's not among us anymore. So I think it is a very, very rare fountain pen, a grail pen in every collection and it's still a grail pen in my collection as well. Well, that concludes our top 10 uh, list of fountain pens from this year. And I truly want to know that I didn't disappoint anyone. Although this is my top 10 favorite fountain pens of 2021, I just want to be in the same um, sentiment to say so with you guys. And to know that um, you guys have pleasure to watch my videos, my content, and to really understand that for me, this is a sharing experience. It's about my passion, my collection of fountain pens, because I truly believe that this collection of fountain pens, not only this 10 fountain pens, but the entire collection that I have at this moment, it's a good uh, medium uh, to interact with the fountain pen community members and I truly believe that we have a lot to learn from each other, from each other's taste, approach regarding collection. For me, for example, for me this year, I didn't uh, went forward and acquired so many fountain pens, but I did concentrate it on a very few that I really, really enjoyed. And I think this is a big step forward because uh, it is a fine line in between collecting and hoarding. And actually collecting uh, for me implies that you need to have a certain strategy. You have to pick a certain uh, fountain band that you love. You actually have to be challenged to find that fountain pen. And also I've uh, done another exercise this year. I've uh, opened my collection to be um, let's say shared some of the pieces of my collection were up for sale and some of them uh, are with uh, a few lucky new owners right now and I'm very very fortunate to be uh, a custodian for those fountain pens and to share them with you all because I do love them but uh, whenever I feel that a fountain pen is not properly used or uh, oftenly used by myself. I try to find something new, challenging and something that's fresh and I want to experiment with and I usually trade it off or sell a fountain pen from my collection and acquire a new one. So that's one of the strategies that I applied this year just to not go overboard with my collecting habits. Well, that's kind of it and uh, I do appreciate if you stayed on this video for so long and I am very fortunate and very blessed to have such an 
audience and I'm very, very uh, thankful for your support. Down below, you will find the links for our website, our social media accounts, uh, email, phone number, anything that you need to get in contact with me. Share your opinions regarding my collection and my top 10 favorite fountain pens in the comment section down below. Also, if you want to support my content, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up. This will help me a lot with the algorithm to reach out to many more just like you, which are passionate individuals of our beautiful fountain pen community. Also, I know that many of you that are watching my videos are not subscribed yet. So if you want to support me and subscribe, you can click right here and turn the notification bell on. This will you will know whenever I post new content. And if you want to see more quality content from Penventure or myself, you have this video right here. Click and enjoy. My name is Emi and I look forward to seeing you next video. Take care, stay safe, bye bye.